Welcome to Monument Mayhem. Every day I'm traveling to a new monument in Rust for 25 days straight. You're going to see a new monument and a new video from me on this channel every day until I'm done with every single one. Oh, there's my ride. Gotta go. All right, here we are, day five. Let's talk about the junkyard, which marks the end of the tier one monuments. I'll be honest, I did spend some time doing some templatizing for these uh, so that they could be a little bit easier for me to do in the future. So if it seems like I'm going through the same stuff in the same order, that is by design. <laughs> so let's talk about the big three things in a monument, the radiation level, the recycling, and the puzzle. Okay, so Junkyard does not have any radiation. It's perfectly accessible, even if you're naked. Does it have a recycler? Yes, which we will talk about. Does it have a puzzle? No, it does not. So we won't talk about it. The Junkyard's a bit of an interesting monument and with the additions of the motorcycles and bikes, it definitely raised its value when it already had some good value to begin with. The recycler is perched up top with a great vantage below, but it can be pretty easy to sneak up on, especially at night and especially from behind. So sound is definitely gonna be your best friend here as it has several very unique sound cues with metal and dirt that you may wanna pay attention to. Remember that when you jump and land, it's always gonna be a lot louder for other people to hear than walking or crouching. Just a pro tip for the junkyard. Of those barrels, you can expect to leave with at least two to three diesel each time if it hasn't been looted recently. Diesel barrels spawn every 60 minutes and are a really valuable resource. Even if you're not gonna use them, you can always trade them to other players. There is no NPCs or radiation. You can find a green card in the office, and I'm starting to sense a theme here with where these green cards are coming from, and a plethora of loot crates scattered around, and I will say there are some diesel spots and barrel spots that you might not necessarily have noticed your first pass through the junkyard that you may want to check out. The junkyard also has one of the more interesting vehicles in Rust, the crane. It gets mad at you if you try to drive off with it, but staying inside the junkyard, you can maneuver this crane with a magnet on it. You activate the magnet with R, and you can move it around with WASD, shift, right, and left click. The point of this crane is to pick up the white scrapped cars and put them in the big recycler, and boom, you get a good little chunk of scrap, metal fragments, and sometimes even high qual. Also, fun fact, you can also scrap regular cars. If you limp in a three module car with low quality parts, you can take them out and get 125 scrap for it. It's actually not the worst way to get scrap in the world, but you will need to throw in some low grade to operate the crane yourself. Aside from this, the junkyard also has a modular car lift, which allows you to swap parts of your vehicle out and add a key lock to your cars, which is awesome. Since the last update, it seems like motorcycles and bikes spawn here more frequently than other places, so if you are looking for a ride, this might be the best place to look. Junkyard is the last of the tier 1 monuments, and as far as building around it, you obviously can't build super close, but it's a reasonable, reliable form of loot that's definitely going to be less populated most times than the abandoned supermarket or Oxum's gas station. It doesn't have any military crates, which is a bit of a bummer, but it has some other valuable items that, for me, put it above the abandoned supermarket with the caveat that it's probably better for solos or smaller groups. Anyway, that's it for day five. I'll see you guys tomorrow for day six. Peace.